Hello and welcome guys. This is a brand new video series we have made for you called The Glove Box, a podcast style series where we catch up with all sorts of YouTubers from all sorts of different industries, including that of our own. This is the first ever episode. If you guys like it, make sure you like, subscribe, and let us know down below. Without further ado, Let's get into this. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Geared Up Garage. We have something very exciting for you guys today, something very brand new. And in today's video, it's a brand new series. It's called The Glove Box. This is where we will be interviewing other YouTubers and different people throughout the industry to basically hear their stories and what they have to say. You're joined today by my very special co-host and good friend, Mr. Jack Nunn. Normally behind the camera, it's nice to finally be- uh, In front of one. Uh, it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and our very, very special guest for today is YouTuber, Mr. Josh Sanderson himself. Hello, Josh. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, not bad, mate. How are you? You okay? Yeah, all good, all good. It's a bit of a uh, over-exaggeration, I think. Very no. special. But, uh... No, you are very special. You're fantastic. Yeah, right, so for anyone that doesn't know Josh, um, Josh does videos where he buys, sells, and trades up cars on YouTube. You've only got, what, six or seven actual car videos up at, or live at the minute. Yeah, yeah. So I started YouTube years ago filming skateboarding and I think, yeah, three or four car flips I've got on there at the moment. Um, started that a few months ago. Well, probably close, about 10 months ago, I think I did the first one. And then between waiting for cars to sell, waiting for parts to come in, that sort of stuff, I've been doing a few other videos that haven't done as well, but I've got some, some stuff ready. I've got two flips that I've done. Just need editing, and I've just picked up a new car last night. So, well, what nice what would you pick up? Can you tell us? I got a 2014 Mazda 6 nice. 2.2 diesel. Very nice. So it'll be the, the newest car I've done, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New, newest one I've done, yeah. Do you know what year it is? Well, 2014. Oh, 2014. Yeah. <laughs> 2014. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's what Josh does. He makes some fantastic videos. And I must say, personally, I mean, I've been watching you since you did the red BMW. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah, that yeah. was probably the first or second flip you did, was it? Yeah, I did the red E46 and the red one series. That's the one I watch. And I must admit, I think your editing is superb. Um, I'll get more huh? into that later on, but from an editing perspective, I, this is one of the main reasons that I was attracted to to watch you and things like that. And I just think your editing and you know the quality of your videos are absolutely superb. Right. So now we've introduced Josh. Before we talk about all the YouTube stuff and everything else, I do want to talk about your surfing and I do want to talk about your skateboarding because obviously that's how you started out. So in terms of like a video making perspective how did you start skateboarding how did you start surfing and then how did that come into like youtube basically oh i've i started skating when i was about 11 so started you know playing around with the skateboarding sort of year six in primary school here in the uk and then um you know on like a, a board from argos that kind of thing and then was getting into it was sticking with it learn how to ollie and and stuff on that board and then for a birthday, I, w I asked for a full, complete skateboard from a skate shop, and I had uh, I had a printed out picture of the board in my blazer at school, and then used to go to the skate shop and look at all the different ones, and then, yeah, very grateful my parents got me that for a, uh, a birthday. And then, yeah, shortly after that, I can't, to be honest, I can't really remember when I started getting interested in cameras. I've already had a little bit of an interest, but as soon as I started skating, um, a good friend of mine, Jake, he was always filming everyone. Um, and I used to have a go of his camera every now and then, and I thought it looked, looked a lot of fun. So just, you know, me and a few of my mates, I'd start filming them, just making little edits. I think most of them are still on the YouTube channel. They're not so great, but but that's sort of how that spiralled. And then um, did photography in GCSE. Hated it, absolutely hated it. So yeah. I like a bit of photography from what I see on your Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I love photography, but in GCSE, it was sort of a case of it was more about writing about what you've taken than actually the technical side of it. So one piece I did, um, my teacher was really impressed with it, was showing it to like the A-level students to say, and this is sort of the quality of work you should be doing. And then I got a B on that piece because I didn't do a artsy write up about about what it means and sort of reminds me when when people do maths exams you get the answer correct but you didn't show you working out 
Yeah, yeah, exactly the same. Yeah, like the end product. I was really happy with the end product, but yeah, the the writing just wasn't good enough to get a good good mark on that, and it just it killed photography for me. You know, doing all the all that side of things. So that's when I went sort of heavier into video because um, I was still interested in cameras. Thought I wanted to be a photographer. Swapped it to video. Then went to college to do creative media production. Exact same thing happened. Hated it there. Oh, really? So, when, yeah, yeah. Because it was one of them. It was sort of, I think, uh, in GCSE, a lot of people did media and saw it as a bit of an easy subject. So, we just went off to college to do it as like a DOS subject, I think. Um, so, a lot of the stuff they were teaching was really basic. And I'm sure you guys will be the same. If you're interested in something, you spend loads of time on YouTube learning it. So by the time I got to college, I'd learned, I'd say like 70% of the two-year course. So it was just like a bit of a waste of time, really. But so then I went back into photography after that, started um, a freelance business. I started doing weddings, some corporate stuff, um, worked with a few other people. And then, yeah, a couple of years ago, again with Jake, who I mentioned earlier, he's... Um, He's a freelance video videographer, really successful. He's with uh, Skateboard GB now, doing some of their stuff. And I started filming weddings with him, um, doing some corporate stuff with him, and then started doing it on my own. And then I've been flipping cars for probably three or four years now, you know, just as like a, a side hustle. And for ages saying to my friends, I was like, oh, I need to film this. But I was so scared about being on camera. Um I don't really know what changed it, to be honest. It was that I bought that E46 to flip and then thought, I haven't done anything on it just yet. This might be a good video, so pumped that video out. And I think that's on about 50,000 views at the moment. So it it's done really well. Um, yeah, it's yeah. It's a really yeah. nicely put together video and things like that. But you say like you're not that confident in coming across on camera, but obviously you, you do just fine in your videos. I find that a lot when I speak to people, they always say, Oh, how do you how do you get so energetic? How have you got yeah. so much energy and stuff on camera? And it's just like, well, you just forget. Did you ever find it? You just forget you're filming half the time and it's just Yeah, yeah. I listened to a podcast, I think it was um The Road to Success. Don't know if you've listened to that, and Matt Armstrong was on there. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, with uh, yeah, 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 the one where he's in the back of the bloke's van talking to him. That's the one. Yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah, this, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I do. And he said that. He was like, I speak to a camera better than I speak to people, and it's one of them weird things, but I do relate better with that now because in the first few videos, I did some uh, how to install coilovers, some lowering springs, and in those videos, it's horrendous to look back on because I'm sort of in front, in front of the camera like, hi, um, today I'm going to show you how to change the <laughs> coil. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It was... It was terrible, but I, I found I, I got into the swing of it really quickly. Um, the only thing that's difficult for me still is like on filming on my street, if someone's walking past, it's like, oh, I'll just uh, lie down under the car for a few minutes until I've gone and then film the next. Yeah, I can. we did a video when we went and found a, uh, not WRX, what was it? Is all, you know the hatchback all-wheel drive Subarus, the bug, bug eye Yes. He's a, he's, a, he's a WRX, but it's the hatchback WRX. Um, yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. We we did one of them, and there was people. And this was literally on like a busy street, and people were just yeah. walking up and down all the time. But you just get to the point where it's just, oh, you know, what? I don't really care. Like, they, they do sit and pull fake, make faces at you and things. You're just like, oh, wait, yeah, wait. like at the end of the day, I don't really care as long as my video looks alright. At the end of it, I don't really mind. But, yeah, that's um, the thing. Yeah, this is it. So you're proper driver mechanic, right? So obviously, you do some. Cr I watched your last video, um, where you get the what is it you did for ready for your mate, um. Oh, the, the clutch video. The clutch video, clutch that's challenge. what I was going to say, yeah. yes. So I watched the last video, you did a clutch, you did all of that in your garage on the floor. Yeah, yeah, well that was actually really lucky because my mate, um, he just bought a house with that massive garage, like we, I was so blessed to have that back home because it meant obviously in the rain, before that I'd done two clutches on driveways and it always took a few days because it's like, it'll start raining or you need a part and everywhere's closed or it wasn't the actual labor that was hard. It was all the stuff in between, just not being in a garage. So for me, doing a clutch in 24 hours and to all of my mates, when I said I was going to do the video, they were all like, bloody hell, you're hopeful. Um, but then we ended up smashing through it. Like we had quite a long time of just, we've got a clutch alignment tool, but the new clutch was too heavy um, and the inside was too big. So it, it wouldn't work. So we ended up playing with that for about three hours, trying to get it to work. So it's one another one of them things where if you had the right tools, it would have been way easier, but I wasn't going to BMW to pay like 600 quid for a 
clutch a lineman tool. They do. They charge you an arm and a leg for that. So how are you? So obviously you come in across, like you come across you really well on camera. Obviously you started out doing your skateboarding and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Where did cars come into this? Where, when did oh. you start sitting there thinking, you know what, I'm going to go from, say, filming or shooting, like, pictures of birds and, um, you know... And yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've always loved cars. I was one of those, you know, where, like, for a year before I turned 17, I was researching, like, driver's tests, doing my theory practice, like, looking at what to buy. Always been into cars. Um... I grew up, I think I remember one of the first games I played, my dad, um, I was only a kid and he, he bought a PlayStation 2 and it came with one of those, you know, the really old, like clunky racing wheels. Yes. Absolutely terrible it was. But we had that in a rally game. I used to sit on that all the time. Um, used to play Need for Speed Underground 2. Great game. Driver Great game. What 3. What game that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People watching yeah. this video that don't understand what that is, that don't know what this that that is. Yeah, that's it blows my mind. I know. Yeah, I was speaking to my boss about that the other day. What were we saying? It was a uh, cash machines, and it's like it's not going to be long before all the cash machines are gone, and people won't know what it was. It's like what you could put your card into a hole in the wall and get some money out. Like it's insane everything's moving towards such a digital sort of landscape it's quite scary yeah it's, yeah you yeah think, you think a... you're a modern generation until things change and you're like oh god oh no but that's the thing yeah, tying yeah. it back with obviously what we do is the youtube for example like again yeah. like when you watch matt armstrong on that podcast he's sitting there talking about like there's still so much more to come from youtube oh yeah for i sure, really yeah. think youtube is going to be the next big thing and i think yeah the car yeah. world is so small on youtube like yeah you're yeah. only ever probably two or three contacts away from someone being you know, like, yeah. um, we're getting to be quite good friends with Sam Hard now, who's really cool. And obviously he's mates with Matt and stuff like that. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah. you know, we now run into yourself and things like that. Who obviously, you know, you're just some fantastic content. You've got a lot more subscribers than what we have. Um, you know, but it, it's so tightly niched, if that makes sense, that it only can go one way yeah. and that is to grow. And I think that yeah. benefits a lot of people and YouTube are dropping the, um, the threshold now for you to be able to monetize and things like that. Yeah. So obviously yeah. that helps us on, a bit as well. On growth, uh, Josh, seeing where you are now, realistically, what would you like to achieve? Not necessarily with YouTube, but with yourself in the car scene in the next sort of three to five years, what are you looking to sort of build from your current success? Big question. Oh, um, Jack, Jack with a question. I had a, I know, I think maybe people are going to get annoyed because I know people are always saying like, oh, just do it for the passion and all that stuff. But I did have, on the first, I think it was the E46 video, I had a guy comment and it was one of my very first comments and it blew my mind. He basically said, uh, I can't remember the exact comment, but it was basically like this, this guy's the next Matt Armstrong or something. He'll have like 50K by the end of the year. I see that comment. I see that comment. So I, I, I know one to about. remind myself. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I always go back to that. And that is where I'd like to be at, by the end of the year. I'd like to have 50,000. For and Subscribers don't really matter at all um, on YouTube anymore. They used to matter a lot. But I mean, not to sound too cocky, but I think I'm a good example of that. Because that first video, I had like 400 subscribers. And that video did really well. So it just goes to show subscribers mean nothing. But that's sort of the end of the year goal. And then after that, I think I just, I've always said to all my friends, if I can make a living wage off doing YouTube and the flipping cars, obviously the profit I make from that, then that would be like absolutely insane to me. Being able to sort of work for myself, decide when to go on holiday. Like if the surf's good, for example, going back to what you said earlier, be able to go for a surf. And the other thing is I'd love to be able to sort of help my friends out like in that clutch video that you were talking about earlier where I've got my friend, his uh, his first car, right? And I love doing stuff like that. Like I'd love to be able to get my friend's cars and flip cars for them and sort of have enough financial stability myself to be able to, this, this stuff like I've always said to my dad, I'll buy him a new uh, 
a new car and you know things like that i'd just love to be able to sort of share that out and be able to surprise friends with cars and car parts you know like diffs and coilovers that sort of stuff um but i haven't to be honest i haven't really got any like set in stone goals for the next three to five years i just want to sort of see see where it takes me and i'd love to be able to do it full time if possible and if I can start flipping more and more interesting cars, then that'll be a huge bonus. What I'm resonating from this is you want to turn your passion into a living. And I don't think there's a better way to do it than the way you're doing it. If anything, at the moment, you're building the scaffolding for success. And I, I guess <laughs> at, at the moment, it's it's just rinse and repeat. Because like, like Jay and yourself have said, it seems to be working. For where you saying, you know, you're at 400 subscribers and then you had that one video blow up. Do you think there was any 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 sort of, what's the word here? Do you think there was anything in particular about that video? Which, like a catalyst, which, think, which did so well? Do you think it was E46s or do you? <laughs> See, I'm, I'm genuinely surprised because some of the other flip videos, like I've got two videos that I've done, both of them just touching 300,000. And I always thought that E46 video was going to go up in numbers because it's an E46. But for whatever reason, it's not done as well as the others. But I think it just comes down to... I think I got lucky with the car because it was a very cheap car. Um, so I could make a lot of money, which is obviously good for the title. Um because people love seeing people make money. And they love all that um, sort of stuff. Wheeler dealers and all that yeah, sort of stuff, yeah. isn't it? Like, well, exactly. We'll never know how much money we made out of this and things. And yeah, 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 yeah. Money makes the world go around, doesn't it? Yeah. And then the other thing is, I think before I did that E46 video, I decided I was going to do YouTube for flipping cars. And I just decided I am going to do it properly. So I started... I used to go on YouTube to look at like other people playing with cars and skateboarding, surfing, that sort of stuff. But from that point onwards... Whenever I was on YouTube, I was learning how to YouTube. So I don't know if you know, like, vidIQ or... Um, is that, I, this I, is all Jack's level of stuff. This is, like, yeah, well, I'm yeah, just yeah, a camera yeah. guy. This is what Jack, yeah. Jack does behind the scenes. Vid, vid, I, VidIQ is an elite tool. We actually should get used up on it, to be fair. Yeah, was, that's so good. Them, um, Think Media, all of those channels, I just smashed out all of those videos, um, sort of, because I already had the the video capability like the edited and the film and I had good cameras from my uh, previous businesses so it, all it was was adjusting it for YouTube and that's obviously you start looking into statistics like click through rates on your thumbnails and average view durations and hooks and that sort of stuff like writing a script to keep people interested so I just did loads of research on that before I made that first video which I think I think it just saved me a lot of time in trial and error, if that makes sense. And the thing with the vi the videos that I do, I know a lot of people do what I do, but in parts. Um, so some people have like a 15 minute video on flipping a car, but it'll only be a few things. Whereas I try to do everything in one video, you know, because Mr. B said it's, it, it's easier to improve your video by... 50% and your views will go up by 10 times the amount. So it's it's easier to make one good video on the entire process with loads of different content in it than it is to make, say, five videos on flipping one car and they've all, you know, a little bit dragged out. Like, people aren't stupid. You don't need to explain everything, which is something I learned from my first few videos. Is I'm not doing a how-to, so people don't need to see every single bolt that comes off and I don't need to explain every single thing that I'm doing. It just needs to be enough to satisfy the sort of mechanical interest, but small enough to keep the interest going and not have a really sort of, like I say, like dragged out video, if that makes sense. So with that being said, obviously you've done clutches on driveways You've done servicing, you do a lot of cleaning stuff as well. You love a good detail. Yeah, yeah. Where are you going from there? Are you going to buy something with something that's seized and then you're going to put an engine in it? Like, are oh. you going to do like what Armstrong does and just keep getting crazier and crazier? Or are you just like, you know what, the little service things and maybe like a clutch? I'll leave it there. I think I absolutely love my Armstrong. Like, he's obviously an absolute legend and he's done stuff that I can't even imagine doing. But the the only thing I'm worried about is obviously if you 
imitate someone, you can only be sort of 80% of them. Um, so I don't want to imitate him, and I'm always sort of careful about that. But it's hard, really, because it might sound a little bit ungrateful, but I feel like I've got myself in the niche of car flipping, and that was never really the intention. I wanted to do a YouTube channel, sort of um, car throttle vibes, you know, so anything automotive-related. Um, and obviously, on the clutch video, I only got like 1,500 views, which isn't as much as I was hoping for. So I, I don't know where I am with it, really, because I'm, I'm thinking about starting a second channel for other stuff away from car flipping. But I, the, the plan is definitely to get a unit. That's the next plan. Going back to that question, forgot about that. In the next three to five years, hopefully a lot sooner, I'd like to have my own unit um, so that I can flip more cars. Because the trouble is at the moment, it takes so long to film a video that I always get people commenting, have you stopped making videos? When's the next one coming out? And it's like, obviously, I have to buy the car, diagnose it, order parts, wait for them to come fit the parts, clean the car, and then if all that goes well, maybe I can get that done in a week. Sometimes I have to sit on it for a month waiting for the car to sell, and then I've got to edit it. You know, it's like it can take so long to get one video out. So if I have the ability to do multiple at the same time, um, then that just means I can put more videos out. But I do want to do more stuff like trips to the Nürburgring and challenge videos and stuff like that. And I always wondered, because I looked at Matt Armstrong, especially in his intros, he'd always do one sentence, but in like three different locations. And that always, when I noticed that, I was like, that's so genius. He must be writing a script because he'll be in his car saying like, I bought this BMW M5 competition and then he'll be at the junkyard and he'll be like, oh yeah, and it's like a crash title and then in another one in his unit or something, you know he'll carry on the contact, the conversation. And you know it's good because you, you almost don't notice it whilst you're watching it because it just keeps you hooked all the time though. That's, yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. a genius yeah. at that. But I think the thing with Armstrong is he looks a lot of like actual like old stuff uh, like TV show style things and obviously like I heard that he was doing um, a lot of scripting and a lot of things like that um, with his videos and stuff so yeah excellent it blew my mind to find out that he still edits his own videos I'm not sure if he still does it but I've seen it on Instagram and he was saying he still edits all of his videos which he does it on a little laptop that man must not sleep, I swear, because he's got so much like actual labour going on, and then he's filming it, and then he's editing it all himself, and he's doing like one video a week on the main channel, one video a week on the second channel, and then he's got all of his other businesses. Like, I can't imagine what it's like for him dealing with brands. Like, it's the amount of work that he must do is absolutely mental. That's what we find when we try when we try and get people to come down and talk to us and things like that. We really struggle with it. Like they, they always, they're always like, yeah, we really want to help. We really want to support your channel. We really want to work with you. And they like watching, like sometimes they watch our videos and things, but then it's like trying to get them to commit to something is so hard because they just don't have the time. Yeah, and like yeah, when yeah. we come back from shows and things, like we do a lot of the lorry scene. So when we come back from that, I mean, me and Jack will spend till like two, three o'clock in the morning editing um, all that kind of thing and, and literally and we've been up since like 7 a.m the next day so we'll yeah. do like a, a 17 yeah. 18 hours straight just to get the video out as soon as possible exactly. because that's when the show's exactly. still fresh in everyone's mind yeah and everyone's going to be looking yeah. at footage from the weekend before so if we we're home at say seven o'clock on sunday night by uh 11 maybe probably like midnight one o'clock monday morning the video will be done yeah yeah so you're again, so we, we, I was going to say, Gaden Truck Show last week took it out of me. Oh, my <laughs> He was so tired. That weekend yeah. took it out of me. I can imagine. Like, you guys are kind of unlucky in the sense that your stuff, like with the truck shows, is time sensitive. Like you say, you've got no choice. If you wait a week to start editing, there's probably almost no point because there'll be so many other videos and people just won't be interested in it anymore. So that's one thing that I'm a bit lucky with is none of my stuff is time sensitive, obviously, except just the huge... I do worry about the time between posts just because obviously in the internet age, people forget about you in an, in an instant. So I'm trying to keep the momentum going, but obviously I've had, like I, I apologize as well because I was supposed to come down to you guys in the studio and do this, but I was dead excited to come down and then sort of got close to the time and I was thinking, 
oh, I, I can't. I just don't have the time. Like I say, I've had. We've got the the showers leaking. That started another day. So we've got mold all over the house. We're trying to fix that. Just have went you through. Just the uploaded the t- have you just uploaded a YouTube shorts or something? I have last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, mental. Right. yeah, mental. So we are running out of time, unfortunately, Josh. But don't worry about not coming down and things like that. We'll sort it out another time. As you say, hopefully we can work together in the future and we can go do some cool car stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We're no stranger to driveway mechanics either. So especially <laughs> yeah, 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 I love yeah. breaking things. So thank you so <laughs> much for your time today. I've got four questions to ask oh, yeah. you before oh, yeah. we go. So we've got five minutes, four questions. Right. The first thing, dream project. You can work on any car, any car of your choice. Where are you doing it? What car is it? And what are you doing to it? Um, oh, it's between a few. It's going to have to be a Datsun 240Z. Do a Excellent th- choice. Oh. What a car. Yeah. What a car. Full nut and bolt, nut and bolt nut restoration. restoration. Bolt. Maybe put sort of an RB26 in it. Um, and let's just go for it. For the sake of it, I'd love to do it in Japan. I'd love to go... Absolutely love to go, but far too busy. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so we've talked about what's next. Um, we've talked about your goals, uh, which we were going to say to the end of the video, but it doesn't matter. Uh, my last question to you would be, where did you learn your mechanics from? Are you Did you used to do an apprenticeship or anything like that, or is it literally just all from your own hand? No, nothing. All from breaking my own cars and then being forced to fix them because I didn't have the money to take it somewhere else. So, yeah, I've had, like, Endless cars started working on my first, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a one oh, a nineteen ninety eight Peugeot one oh six that um, I kept breaking. I wanted to modify, and my dad was like, "Oh, don't be a knobhead, you know, keep it stock when you come to sell it." Ended up writing that off, so it didn't matter anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, everything's just I've learned a lot from my dad. He's he's never been a mechanic, but he's been on the tools and he's mechanically minded, so he's taught me a lot. Um, but yeah, just. YouTube, Chris Fix, Autodoc, and a lot of uh, knuckle skin left on the driveway. Excellent. Mate. Just, just uh, push, pushing on from that. Is there anything uh, upcoming that we uh, oh, we can more question that we can uh, I guess be excited for in, in the in the next couple of weeks from yourself? Oh, I don't know how. I've told you anyway what car I've got. So I've just bought a 2014 Mazda six. That's a non-runner. So I had to get that recovered. Um, I got it for quite cheap, very happy with the price. So hopefully that'll be a decent profit margin that I'll be making on that, which is great for the title and thumbnail. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think, I'm hoping, I know what's wrong with it, but we'll see. Um, And my, I'm not sure if I'll post it next or second next, but I've got a Audi TT, 225 BAM Quattro that flip oh. and that was a little bit modified so that was kind of exciting I wanted to do sort of drag races with it but couldn't find the time or place to do it so wanted to do more but yeah that that's somewhat exciting yeah excellent okay right I think that does it thank you Happy very much days. for your time Thanks. today that was Josh Sanderson on the glove box Cheers, remember well, guys well, Josh's well, detail well. Josh's social media will be linked in the description below make sure to uh, we're Give him a follow, give him a give him a like, a hit him up on the Instagrams, all of that. And uh, yeah, drop us a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you all in the next one. Take care and bye-bye. Ta-da. I'll be the last one left when the lights go out. I'm down to one last breath, but I can't stop now.